الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار all praise and thanks belong to allah azza wa jal we thank him we praise him we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness whoever allah guides there's none that can misguide and whoever he allows to go astray there's none that can guide and i bear witness that there's nothing worthy of our worship except for allah alone and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is the slave of allah and his messenger and the seal of the prophets salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayh and indeed the best of speech is the quran the speech of allah azza wa jal and the best of guidance and example is that of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the worst of matters are the innovations into islam for every newly invented matter it is a bid'ah and every bid'ah is a source of misguidance and every misguidance leads to the hellfire my dear brothers and respected sisters there's no person there's no man there's no brother who saves up his money for a long period of time in order for him to get married and then he has the intention to divorce his wife the next day or the next week the next month or the next year and likewise there's no sister out there who accepts the proposal made to her by this brother and to leave her family and her siblings and to move on to a new home she doesn't do that in order to get divorced the next day or the next week or the next month or the, or the next year no one gets married for that purpose of divorce to to separate allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who has legislated for us the concept of zawaj or the concept of marriage and he gave us principles in order to safeguard it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says uh, he reminds us in the quran that this should not be taken lightly allah calls marriage mithaqan ghalidan which is a very heavy contract a serious covenant and he says subhanahu wa ta'ala wa min ayatihi that it is from his signs from his signs for us to ponder upon from the signs of allah and if something is from the signs of allah then it means that thing is very important or it carries huge importance and responsibility and no one can ever belittle that issue and we're talking about marriage allah says wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwaja that is from his signs that he has created for yourselves spouses li taskunu ilayha part of the ayah the reason for it is that you can find peace in your wife you can find peace in your husband you can find peace and tranquility in your spouse which means that as a single person you will not find that tranquility that you want without a companion and that companion being from the opposite gender many times when people are asked what's the purpose of you getting married many of them men- mention companionship right to be with someone which allah has created in us is part of our fitra we need someone to be with us in this journey of the dunya if you're a brother you need a wife if you're a sister you need a husband this way you complement one another this is why after a married unit is formed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says 
هن لباس لكم وانتم لباس لهن that your spouse is like a garment for you just as clothing that you wear it protects you either from heat or cold a spouse will protect your flaws and your mistakes and your deficiencies that you have from people a marriage is very private it's a secret it's a private relationship not secret in that sense but things are held in secret between the couple that's how important your spouse is and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says وَلَهُنَّ مِثْرُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلِلْرِجَالِ عَلَيْهِنَّ دَرَجَةٍ That women, they have rights over us. Just as men, we have rights over them. But the men, Allah says, they have a degree over them. That's a degree of authority and also which comes with a lot of responsibility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَعَشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And live with your spouses in kindness, in goodness. فَإِنْ كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا And if you dislike, if you dislike them, perhaps you dislike a thing. And in it Allah puts a lot of good. And the Prophet says, صلى الله عليه وسلم, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِ That the best, the best among you are the best to their families, meaning to their wives, to their spouses. Does all this, my dear brothers and sisters, does it mean that marriages are free of problems? Definitely not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He could have decreed for the last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that his own marriages would be free from any issue. But that was not the case. So problems will come up. Issues will come up. Even in the household of the best of people, like the Prophet Muhammad alayhi wa and prophets before him, who were married and did not have perfect wives. But we need to be balanced. We need to be wise, especially as men. In regards to women, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in hadith, which was authenticated by Shaykh al Albani, he says, Alayhi Salatu Salam, Ida Salat al Mar'atu Khamsaha, Wa Hassanat Farjaha, Wa Ata'at Zawjaha, Dakhalat Min Aywa Bil Janna Sha'at. Or Kama Khal, that if a woman she does her due diligence in praying her prayers, her five daily prayers, and she protects her chastity, and she obeys her husband, then she will enter Jannah from any of its gates that she wishes to enter. So one of the keys to enter Jannah for our sisters is to obey their husband, and to be devoted to the, in their deen, and to protect their chastity. So if she does this, inshallah ta'ala, she has good news of entering Jannah in this manner. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, what we are observing today, or these days, is that many of you will also tes- testify to this fact is that many homes are being broken, many divorces are taking, pu- are taking place, many sisters are, are asking for divorce, and many husbands are quick to give the divorce. And this is not the case for only people who have been married recently, but even the people who have been married for 20 or 30 years. Yes, this is the reality. People who have Kids who have grown to be mature adults themselves and the parents are separating. Then we have those who have been married for only several weeks or for a year or so and all of a sudden they can't stand one another. All of a sudden there is great enmity between the spouses. It's something which is painful to to see in fact, especially if they are people who are close to you. And if there are children involved, this makes the calamity even greater. So definitely, divorces are taking place, problems are happening, but do we have any solutions for these problems? There is solutions. We can say there is solutions for people who are sincerely seeking these solutions. Inshallah ta'ala, I would like to, to share a few pointers and reminders for us to, to think about in this regard. For people who are not married yet, but thinking of getting married, for people who are married and for people who are thinking of of leaving their marriage nasrullah salama wa la aqulu ma tasmaun alhamdulillah bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah my dear brothers and sisters in islam the divorce rates have increased amongst the muslim community 
with percentages or levels which we have not wit witnessed before. This is done, or according to some of the studies which have been uh, done in this regard, that the marriages in the Muslim communities, uh, the divorces in those marriages are, are hiking. And as we know, in this western part of the world, the divorce rates are high to begin with. They're over 50%. But this rate has not been known amongst Muslims themselves. Divorce have taken place, of course. And divorce itself is not evil. Okay, we want to make it seem like that. But it's the last solution, the last result, right? It's the last thing that you should do if you really need to leave your marriage. But the point is that Muslims, we are not immune from these problems. And the chances of these divorces taking place nowadays is much higher than, than before. And as we said, in this part of the world, you know, in these non-Muslim countries in particular, you know, this has been taking place. It's very normal, very normal to meet people who, who have been married, who have kids from another marriage and stuff like that. But this is not uh, only new to them, this is the case for us as well. Should not be surprised about that. But why is it becoming so rampant? Why is it happening so often? Why is this increasing so much? Right? Part of it has to be because of the ignorance that Muslim couples have about marriage and the responsibilities which come with marriage and the rights which are owed to, to one another. And then there's the fitna of the habits which are taken from the non-Muslims and the lifestyle which is brought into our own traditions which also causes these issues. My dear brothers and sisters, if we want to protect our homes, one of the things we need to do for those of us who are not married yet, this advice is very important for you. So pay attention. You should not get married without taking a marriage course. A marriage course to understand what the concept of marriage is really about. Many people are getting married, but they have no clue about the marriage itself and what comes with it. You should take a marriage course before you get married. In fact, moving forward, for many of the marriage ceremonies that we perform, I will not do a marriage ceremony for anybody who does not have a marriage course proven to be done before coming to get married. Because what's the point of getting married and then coming a few weeks later saying, I want to divorce? What is the point of all the money that has been spent, all the pain that has been caused to the families, to your family, to her family, and whatnot? We want to avoid that. So for people who are not mar uh, married yet, you sh don't get married without taking a marriage course. Yes, we didn't have marriage courses, you know, in the past. It's true. Well, that's, that has different factors. The past is different. Times have changed. In the past, we would observe, you know, our own families, our grandparents, our extended relatives. We would learn from them how to treat our wives and how to treat the husbands. That's not the case anymore. It's decreasing. So a marriage course for a person who, have not, who, have, who has not been married before is a must. This is what I strongly urge to, to take place. And know that a marriage is not just for lust. As many people, they, they get into it for that, or a fantasy. No. Learn why you are getting married and the potential problems that you might have and how to encounter those problems and how to deal with them. Some things are not even problems, but they become problems to a newly married couple. And then some things are exaggerated out of the reality. And then, you know, one thing leads to the other. So when you take a marriage course, inshallah, this is going to help you a lot, especially if you are not married. And it is better, of course, to prepare a bit in advance rather than, you know, getting married now and divorce a few weeks down, down the road. So save yourself the pain, save your family the pain, save, you know, her the pain and her family the pain by taking a marriage course, which there is plenty of them available. And when I say a marriage course here, I'm not talking about going to a non-Muslim marriage you know, uh, services and stuff like that. No, I'm talking about a Muslim marriage course, my dear brothers and sisters. These courses are available online. You can take them from the comfort of your home. You know, there's lots of them, and you can look into that, but you should definitely take a marriage course before getting married. 
So also, if you are parents and you have kids, of course, who have grown up and they're marriage ready, if you like, and they want to get married, you have to tell them, take the marriage course. Make them take a marriage course before they go down this journey. And hopefully, by doing this, we can save a lot of problems. A lot of problems from you know, coming up and a lot of marriages from being broken to begin with. In regards to us who, who are married, we need to remember a few points. Inshallah ta'ala. The first one is our niyyah, our intention, and of course the purpose behind our marriage to begin with. Whatever you do, you should have an intention in regards to your wife, in regards to your spouse. That is, intention should be to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. So whatever you do for your wife, do it with the intention of ibadah, with the intention of seeking reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you're helping her out with something or taking out the trash or whatever, you should do it sincerely for Allah's sake and you will see the changes in your marriage after this. You should not say, why, why isn't she doing this? Why do I have to do it? You know, why didn't she take out the trash? Why did she leave it for me? No, you do it, and you do it with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this will bring about harmony between you and your spouse. So going back to the intention, this is uh, uh, definitely an essential part. Secondly, be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given you the ability to get married to begin with. There's many people out there who would wish to get married, but they're unable to get married for whatever reason. There's many people out there who wish to have children, but Allah did not grant them that. So you should be grateful to Allah Azawajal for Allah allowing you to, to be able to experience these blessings to begin with. Thirdly, focus on your akhirah. Focus on your hereafter. Whatever hardship that you may be going through and struggles that you may be facing in your marriage, just remember that you are in the dunya. And this dunya is just a matter of days. And inshallah, the akhirah is very close. So remember the akhirah. Don't make, and don't make the dunya your, your priority. And fourthly, be a person who is realistic. No, be a realistic person. Many people, once they get married, they have these high expectations from their wife, from their spouse. So don't raise the bar too high. Don't raise the bar too high because you will be disappointed. Your spouse is not perfect. And neither are you. So you will struggle, and she will struggle. She's a human being, but remember that you are a human being as well. So you will have flaws, and she will have flaws. So in the gap between that which is real and that which is, you know, a high set expectations, right in the middle there, this is where a lot of problems in marriages occur to begin with. And there's lots of assumptions, there's lots of, you know, uh, su'uvan, you know, thinking negative, negatively of one another, and then it leads to other issues. So this is a reminder for myself, and for all of us, inshallah ta'ala, to have these points in our mind, and then to put them into practice, and see the differences between life ta'ala. And as for those, as we said, who are not married, take the marriage course. And a marriage course may be applicable even to married couples. Yes, and even if you need to take counsel, counseling sessions with a Muslim counselor to help resolve the issues between you and your spouse, you should do that before you, you know, press that divorce button, before you say talaq, before you divorce your wife, Likewise, the wife, before she seeks divorce, should calm down and look at other options and alternatives in order to see if we can make this marriage work, right? And counseling is one of those uh, mediums that we can use to help save the marriage. And many marriages have been saved by the permission of Allah Azawajal through counseling. So it's very important that we seek help when we need it. Don't ignore it. If you have a problem, you address it, and there's people who can help with that bimilai ta'ala. And it's better that you spend you know, some money in these services uh, rather than spending a, a big time in a divorce because divorces are not cheap. They're not cheap. And they're more, you know, they're worse than, worse than paying a lot of money. They break your heart. They break your heart. And they break the homes. And they disintegrate the, the family and the, the children. If they're involved as well, it makes it even worse. You know? So please think about these things, my dear brothers and sisters. They're very essential for us to ponder upon. I know this khutbah is very brief and short and does not address everything. But it's something for us to think about, these points I wanted to share. 
with us today in order to protect our families, in order to protect our homes, and to protect us from, you know, uh, being disintegrated. Because once the family is disintegrated and separated, this leads to a community being separated and disintegrated as a Muslim community and as a society as well. We ask Allah to guide us towards those things which are beneficial for us, for our deen and our dunya, and for our akhirah. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzukna tiba'a wa arina al-batila batilan warzukna istinaba. Allahumma ya munqalib al-qulubi wa al-absar thabit qulubin ala deenik. Allahumma ya musarif al-qulubi wa al-absar sarif qulubin ala ta'atik. عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر فبدأ فيه بنفسه فقال جل من قال عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين هذا والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة